It's my pleasure to welcome everyone to the newest interview in a special series highlighting the INFORMS communities, which are comprised of special interest sections, societies, forums, and chapters. In this interview, we'll be taking a look inside one of the INFORMS societies, the largest of the INFORMS communities, that each focus on a common area of interest within the study or practice of operations research, data science, analytics, and more. These interviews explore a specific society's unique focus and activities, as well as the latest advancements and trends in the communities they represent. I'm joined today by Margaretha Ganster, professor with the University of Klagenfurt and the president of the INFORMS Transportation Science and Logistics, or TSL Society, which provides the INFORMS community with a sustained, specialized focus on all topics of transportation science and logistics. Margarita, thank you so much for providing a look inside the TSL Society. To start, could you share how you became involved with the Society? Thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure to talk with you a bit about the TSL Society. So in order to give you my story with TSL, I have to go back a few years to, I think, 2017. I was uh, at University uh, of Vienna by the time, and we were visited by the TSL president in that year. And over dinner, I was talking with him about TSL and the conference. And so he encouraged me to submit my work to go to the TSL conference in Chicago, which I did. So it was really a great conference, a lot of valuable insights. And so I really enjoyed it. And then together with my colleagues in Vienna, we submitted a bit to organize a TSL workshop in Vienna and I will talk about the workshops workshops a bit later but so they are on on special topics very focused and we did this one on uh, transportation the sharing economy but which was a really great success. And afterwards, so I applied for the position of um, international liaison of TSL for Europe, Africa, and Middle East, which I did then for two years. Then finally, I was running for the position of TSL uh, president. And this is why I'm here now. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Within the society, I understand there are five special interest groups. Could you share a bit about these, their role, and how the society came to identify them? Actually, I do not know exactly how they decided how on these five special interest groups, so how the, the history was about. But in fact, it is quite straightforward because these, these are these five fields where most of us are publishing, where most of us are having um, their research projects in. So maybe we can briefly talk about these um, special interest groups. So we have, first of all, the freight, transportation and uh, logistics, and this is a major area in logistics in supply chains is freight transportation, which is typically handled in freight transportation networks. So we are talking about problems in trucking, in rail, in shipping, in air cargo, in so all kinds of aspects of intermodal transportation, so in combining all these transportation modes. So we have a bunch of really complex decision problems which in this within these networks. The in this special interest interest group, so we are talking about planning problems, real-time control, pricing, demand management, risks, risk analysis, design of networks. So there are all kinds of tactical and operational problems that are tackled within this field. Then, of course, we have the group on urban transportation and urban transportation is of particular interest in logistics because urban areas, as we all know, they are growing. There are many young people living in urban areas who are typically using e-commerce for their shopping. And this, of course, poses a lot of challenges on logistics processes. So there's a lot of work to do in order to, for example, solve last mile delivery problems. And this also feeds in, falls into the field of urban transportation. Also traffic, of course, is an issue. So how to handle traffic, how to control traffic in urban areas. So there's this interface between logistics providers, public authorities, population, of course. So we have many complex problems here in, in urban areas. Also decision-making for public transit, infrastructure, facility location, and all these kinds of applications. And also recent topics like shared mobility or man-made hazards, for example. Then we have facility logistics. So in fact, in facility logistics, we are designing 
internal logistics, for example, manufacturing, distribution, but also service facilities like hospitals, for example. So we have to design sort of operational aspects of material and information flow within these facilities in order to be efficient and to increase performance. So here we have special topics like facility layout, material handling, warehousing, storage, order fulfillment, and also how to include data, of course, so inventory tracking and control, for example. And then we have the Intelligent Transportation Systems Group, where we are analyzing, in fact, the impact of communication devices and infrastructure on different kinds of transportation systems. So we have dynamic traffic assignment, traffic flows, of course, a lot of uncertainty, information on, on traffic systems, real-time optimization. We have different kinds of complex decision problems, including dynamic, stochastic, online, online decision problems, where we have to solve uh, problems within very short time spans. Recently connected on automated vehicles and transportation data from sensors, for example. Last but not least, we have air transportation. So it is quite obvious uh, what these guys are doing. So we have to plan and operate airports and airline companies. So there is, of course, all these operational or also tactical decisions related to airports and airlines, like all the slot management and also traffic control on airports, for example, air traffic control, financial or policy analysis, the human factor in aviation, the future of aviation. So there are many, many things that we can discuss discuss uh, related to air transportation. So I'd love to learn more about the members of the TSL Society. We've talked about sort of the areas that they're working in. Could you tell us a bit more about the kind of work they're involved in? Yeah, most of us, we are like tackling complex decision problems, I would say, in different fields of transportation science and logistics. Um, so we are using a bunch of methods in order to solve these um, decision problems and also to give recommendation. For example, so we are, some of us are using exact methods or heuristic methods or data-driven methods are also more and more gaining importance in the field of TSL. We have choice models, we have traffic flow models, so all these kind of decisions that we have to solve within transportation science and logistics are addressed by our members. We also have many members from industry, luckily. Also for practitioners, it is really worthwhile to join the TSL society and to get in touch, to connect um, with researchers or with other colleagues and to talk about like real world problems that they have. But many of us, we are really working on fundamental theory, but I observed that we also have many real-world applications or particularly combinations of real-world applications with fundamental theory, so using observational or experimental studies, for example. This is why we, in, in our events, like TSI Cluster, and during the Infosforms Annual or also in our conferences, we have very nice keynotes combining practitioners' insights and uh, research insights in keynotes or in very interesting panel discussions. So we are really a nice mix of researchers and practitioners, I would say. So I understand there are a significant number of students in the TSL Society's membership. How does the society help cultivate relationships between student members and those established in their careers? And why is that important? Students are really of particular importance for our society. And so we are more than happy that we uh, are really successful in attracting many of them. During the last TSL conference in Chicago, we had an, a really, really high number of submissions from students, which was very nice. What we are doing for them is, first of all, we have a lot of initiatives, like, for example, offering travel grants such that young research can visit like renowned or senior researchers somewhere in the world. So easy process to apply for these um, travel grants. We will announce the next set of travel grants very soon, by the way. We also offer many awards, which are really focused on young researchers. So, for example, we have the very renowned Best Dissertation Award. I think it's the most famous dissertation award in the field. And we have recently introduced the Best Student Paper Award. So it's the second year now that we are awarding a young researcher with the Best Student Paper Award. These young research, they really have a lot of opportunities to get awards, prizes from TSL. And we have a very, or we are about to set up very innovative initiative, which is an 
So it might be called the North American Young Researcher Workshop, where we are planning to have a really small focused workshop only for young researchers, where we invite also a very few senior speakers in order to really connect these young researchers with some few senior speakers and yeah, to um, increase the network and exchange their research ideas. So um, this we hopefully will be able to set up in, in 2025, so next year. The young researchers, they are like the backbone of our, of our society, I would say. So they, they keep us alive and they are the future of the society. So for us, it is um, really important to stay connected with them, to have them involved in the events, to talk with them about their research ideas and give them the opportunity to share their research. And I think also for them, it is quite important. So TSL can really be helpful so also this is i think reflected in the in the number of young tsl members that we have or in the number of attendees at the at our events so and i think it really pays off for them to join us for our meetings for our conferences there are many editors of the most renowned journals and also from our flagship journal from transportation size science, I think almost a complete editorial board is uh, at the conference or at also at the TSL cluster events at the annual meeting. And so they are approachable, they can talk, they can network with these editors. So I think it really pays off for the young researchers to join us. Well, it sounds like you're just providing an incredible amount of opportunities and support to them. So that's wonderful. So in addition to growing connections and opportunities for students and young researchers, are there additional efforts to promote diversity, equity, and inclusion within the society? Yes, uh, of course. So all of us, we are having this in mind. So this is something that we really want to improve, to work on. So we had an ad hoc committee uh, a few years ago. For the issue, so we do not have like a permanent board member or a permanent committee yet. But um, what we did recently is that we um, adapted, updated our PNP such that all committee members, board positions have to take this into account. So we are working on it. And so hopefully we will have a, uh, also have a board member or a permanent board for these um, issues as well. But we do not have it yet. So can you talk about what additional activities or events the TSL Society holds for its members, um, as well as the informed community? What we are doing, of course, are like many events that we're offering for our members. So we have the, like the huge event is the TSL conference that we have every third year, in addition to informs annual. So it typically takes place in early summer in July, somewhere in North America. So this is quite the broad conference where all the TSL-related topics um, can be presented and discussed. Then we have tailored workshops. So we have workshops um, every year where we do not have the TSL conference, we have bits for uh, workshops, so um, groups with everywhere in Europe or somewhere in the world, it doesn't have to be in North America, can offer works, workshops which are really focused on um, specific topics. As I um, told you in the beginning, so I was organizing a TSL workshop, for example, on sharing economy issues. And there were other interesting, uh, interesting workshops, for example, in Berlin or also in India. So they are really spread all over the world. They are focused on um, special topics and we will have a TSL workshop this year in September in France, in Nantes. So um, this is also what we are offering to our members. And of course, during the annual meeting, we have a TSL cluster, which is organized by the special interest groups, where they put together talks that are relevant for their special interest groups. And of course, we have the full bunch of networking and volunteering opportunities during the annual meeting. Like the core meeting of our society is, of course, the TSL business meeting taking place during the informs annual, typically on Mondays where the whole TSL family is meeting and discussing many issues related to the society. And also we have all these prize award sessions and we are also not only, we do not only have the prizes for the young research, but, but we also have like mid-career and lifetime awards and all this stuff is presented during the business meeting. During the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the world at large became much better informed about supply chain disruptions and other transportation challenges. 
Could you share how these have shaped work that is happening in transportation and logistics? Absolutely. So I would say it really shaped our research topics um, considerably. So already very early in the pandemic, like in the first few days, I would say it became clear that Besides uh, the medical issues, the medical topics, of course, logistics is becoming a, a major problem. So we were observing these disrupted supply chains, but also many different operational problems that uh, popped up. And um, so, for example, lack of drivers or lack of workers in warehouses. And we had to like support public authorities, in fact, with the logistics of vaccines or the planning of the COVID testing center. So we had many operational problems to, to tackle, like optimizing the, the testing centers, like facility location problems, where to open these testing centers and which persons to send to testing centers and which of them had to be tested at home. And of course, the vaccines logistics, there were from one day to the other, we had like millions of decision problems that we never saw before. And these were like really complex problems combining strategic, tactical and operational planning problems, which have been researched independently from each other. But then we really had the combination, the full complexity of these problems. And it was like, for, for me, it was really impressive to see how fast and, and efficiently um, so many researchers work together in order to solve this problem. And that's one thing that I also should mention that facilitated this was that public authorities and companies, they really had incentives to share their data, which they typically do not do. So for us, it's always very challenging to get real world data for um, our research. And back then it was relatively easy. So we had a lot of data to really efficiently tackle these problems and give good uh, recommendations to public authorities, but also to companies in order to tackle these challenges that we had back then. So a lot of great papers, a lot of great research were published by then. There are still many studies popping up now. So it was really impressive to see how these problems could be addressed. Margarita, thank you so much for joining me for this Community Showcase interview. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you. Um, I wanted to ask, is there anything else you'd like to share about the society, its activities and members before we go? Thanks again for having me. Yeah, I just want to share that I think TSL is a very friendly and, and welcoming society. So I personally profited so much of it and I can just encourage everybody, particularly, particularly young researchers, to join us and be, become part of the TSL family. So do not hesitate to reach out to me or one of the other board members if you need more information or just want to meet us in person. So next opportunities are TSL workshop in Nantes in September or the annual meeting in, in Seattle. So we would be more than happy to having you. Thank you again, Margarita. And to our viewers, stay tuned as we explore more of the informed sections and societies and upcoming community showcase interviews.